In this video, I'm going to be talking about five reasons why people fail their PMP exam or any exam for that matter. My name is Andrew Ramdiel and I am the best-selling author of the book PMP Exam Prep Simplified. Now, over the last, I would say, 20 plus years that I've been doing training, uh, I've helped over 150,000 people with books, videos, uh, live classes, and so on, pass their certification exam. I've talked to thousands of people personally. And uh, in this video, I'm going to break down to you the folks that failed their exam, what led to their failure? What was the five, the top five things that led to their failure? So let's get right into it. And I'm going to give you the top five. Now I'm going to start with number five, and then I'm going to work the way up to number one, the number one thing that causes people to fail an exam. All right, so let's get started. Number five, is studying the wrong materials. Way too often do I see students that didn't pass the exam or didn't pass many exams study the wrong materials. There are just some study guides that are out there that is not updated to the exam that you're studying. So let's say you're studying the, the a current PMP exam, but you're studying old materials that doesn't cover many agile concepts. Maybe you're studying PMBOK 5 content, which you shouldn't be doing. You're studying for a CompTIA exam and you're studying technology that's outdated or technology that's not even covered on the test. Anytime you study for a certification exam, you got to make sure that the material you're using is valid for that exam. Now you're saying, Andrew, how do I do that? Well, that's what reviews are for, right? You got to go through reviews on the study guides or the coursework that you're using. Sample it to see even if you can understand from it. Sample it to see if it matches the exam objective. One easy way of doing that is reviewing your exam objectives and then looking at the courseware, like the table of contents or the layout of all the videos. And you'll know, hey, is this thing updated? One of the worst things you ever can ever do on an exam is taking a, taking a certification exam uh, after studying like crazy, only to find out that most of the things you study was not on the test. And then you're like, you wasted all your time and your money taking this exam because you're probably not going to pass. Number four, lack of understanding the materials. Now, this is a big one. Many times people, when they're studying from a particular author or from a particular trainer or something like that, they don't understand it. Okay. Sometimes when I explain something, not everyone gets it. I've had times when I've taught technology courses where people say, Andrew, I didn't get that. Then I have to re-explain it. Andrew, I didn't get that. Then they take it with another instructor and they're like, oh, I got it now. There are many times that students comes into my class and I explain it. They're like, oh, now it makes sense. Yet they have read three other books on it. Couldn't make sense. If you're studying things that you know is important for from an exam perspective, and you study it in one study guide or, or watch one video, and you don't get it, watch another video with somebody else teaching it. Now, I'm not saying I have the best materials, although I think I do. If you study something for me and you just don't understand it, even after I finish explaining it in the course, the videos, live class, whatever, go and look at it, Google it, YouTube it. Is that such a thing now as YouTube it? Um, Find somebody else explaining it. Make sure it makes sense. Don't go into the exam room if you don't understand something that is critical to the exam. If you know for this current exam, knowing your processes, knowing your agile concepts and your ceremonies, if you don't get that, you go into the exam room, you're probably going to fail the test. Next thing is something, that was number three, we're getting up there. Something that really affects a lot of people and uh, it's called exam anxiety. All right, so what exactly is that? So you get to the testing center and you're nervous, your heart's beating, your palms are sweaty, you're starting to sweat, you're looking around. I says, hey, Bob. And you're like, Bob, who, who, who's Bob? You don't even know your name. You get in front of the exam, the exam starts up and you forget everything, all right? You don't know what the hell you're reading. The first question says, what's the CV? You're like, what the hell is that resume? What did it ask me about a resume? You didn't know it meant cost variance. Now, I've heard about this. This can have a massive effect on your score. All right. This can drastically drop your score down because you forget vital information. How many times have you gone to an exam and say, wow, I just read that last night. Now I can't remember what the hell I read about. Exam anxiety is a real thing. 
it's going to severely affect your score. You have to prevent it. Now, you're saying, Andrew, how do I stop the exam anxiety? You got to understand the root cause of the anxiety. The root cause of the anxiety is you believing you're going to fail. The root cause of the anxiety is you're, you have this crazy thing in your head that if you fail, bad things will happen. You lose your job. Your, your, your wife or husband will leave you. Your kids will leave you. Your mother will disown you, which none of that actually happened. What happens here is that you actually have anxiety for no reason. Now, I did a video, you guys check it out, on why I actually enjoy failing exam because I have a, a method where I use where I don't mind failing. I go into the exam knowing I'm probably going to fail the test because I accept failure and that removes all anxiety. I actually have no exam anxiety ever at any point because I accept failure. If you accept that you know what, okay, I might fail. And then really reason yourself, what's gonna happen if I fail? And you come to realize nothing. I oh, gotta pay a little bit of money to take it again, big deal. Uh, you know, we spend more money on garbage than on actual improvement. So that's the best way I would recommend to remove it. Try to tell yourself, God, just come to the acceptance of it. And you'll see how easy things, the anxiety, just like that will be gone. Next thing is related to anxiety is number two. And I've seen this. This, I think, affects a lot of students. And that's called overconfidence. Now, what, what is that? Study. You study a lot. You go through tons of videos, live classes, study guides, practice questions galore. You study, you study, you study, you study all everything, all of this. You go take the exam, you're like, I know everything. What happens here? You misread the question. You're doing the exam too quick. You forgot the part that says not. You forgot the part that says first, right? You're reading the questions too fast. Why? Because you're going to ace this exam. Now, this has happened to me before. I once failed a very easy test. I'm so embarrassed to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay? If I tell you, you're all going to say, what's wrong with that guy? You're really going to question, is he really smart? Yes, because I was stupidly overconfident, didn't read the questions carefully, okay? Overconfidence is a real thing that affects a lot of students. You know how many times I've taught classes, I've taught PMP classes where I've met people that didn't pass the exam, come to my class, they're doing, I'm doing practice questions with them. I love doing practice questions with them. You guys see me do it with you guys on the live stream. And you know what happens? They're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't read that word. Oh, I rushed to the answer. And that happens quite often. Don't do that. Every question, doesn't matter how smart you are, every single question, you read in the fine print. You read very carefully. You try to process every question in depth before selecting an answer. This is really important. Reread some questions. I don't want you to spend too long on it, but I need you to read the question very, even though it looks easy. It's sometimes the one that looks easy where you can just get the answer right away. That's the one that has the trick in it that's going to mess you up. Here's a quick tip I use to get over this. When I take an exam, in my mind, every question is a pass-fail. Every question will make me fail. Let me explain to you. Do you think that you could fail this exam by one question? Oh, yes, you could. All right, yes, you could. What if the passing score is 60% and you got 59%? <laughs> Probably could be failed by one question. So what I'm trying to say is this. Every time I get to a question on a real exam, I read it as if that's the question that's going to make me fail. Like every time I come to a question, every, every exam, this is what I do. I read the question, I read it, and I say, man, if I get this one wrong, I'm going to fail this damn test. So I better know what the hell I'm doing. And sometimes the easier the question, the more I sit there and I read it again. Now, one of the things, you know, this thing has a, has a backfire because... If you, sometimes people overemphasize things and that causes them to get the question wrong. Just don't add information to the question. Stay direct to the question. Give it your best shot. Read it once or twice. Don't skip words and you'll probably get it right. Okay. And this brings me to the number one thing that causes people to fail. And you already know it. I didn't have to make a video for it. Did, did you figure it out? Notice I didn't say Lack of dedication and laziness, or dedication slash laziness. Slacking off, not studying. Come on, you, you should have known this one. 
One of the reasons people don't pass exams is because they don't study. I mean, you know this. You Before you watch this video, you should have known what number one was. Dedication is, a, is, is one of the things that a lot of people have a hard time with. Now, dedication is different than, than you um, not having time and, and, and not studying. For example, if you got to work 12 hours a day and you got two small kids at home and you're a single mom, I feel for you, okay? You're probably not going to get much time to study. But lack of dedication is when you work eight hours a day and you come home and spend two hours watching YouTube and cat videos and garbage on TV and not studying for your exam. That's the lack of dedication. How many of you guys find yourself doing stupidness instead of actually studying? Okay, you're watching garbage on TV. What? You know, when you watch a program on TV, what are you getting out of it? Absolutely nothing. Some, some guy the other day says, oh, I was watching the news. I'm like, what are you watching the news to get depressed? You like getting depressed? How about if you study your book and don't get depressed and build yourself up? Um, somebody said to me the other day, oh, it's for my entertainment purposes. You know what's entertaining? Getting a better job is entertaining. You know what's entertaining? Making more money is entertaining. So please, don't watch the next Marvel movie. Study your PMP. You, no one will make time for you. Time will not make time for you. The only person that could make time for you to be dedicated is you. So let's stop being lazy. Let's start dedicating more time to growing our careers, living a better life. You sitting on your phone all day watching TikTok will get you absolutely nowhere unless your job is to watch TikTok and you've been paid for it. Okay, you watching TikTok and Instagram and all this type of garbage is absolutely useless. Take that same time, put it towards your career, put it towards advancement in your industry, and I guarantee you, you'll make a whole lot more money and you'll live and you'll probably be more enjoyable. Not to mention watching TikTok and Instagram will probably depress you anyhow. Those are the five things, guys. Can you remember what they are? Studying the wrong materials. Lack of understanding your materials. Exam anxiety. Being overconfident, of course, the lack of dedication are your five things. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Give the videos a thumbs up. We're going to add a lot more content just like this to help you pass your exams going far in the future. We're also doing a lot of employment-based stuff to get you a better career and make you more money. And I'll see you in the next video.